Chapter 13, 13.1 Finding Areas, Velocity Time Graphs. The graph shown below is a velocity time graph for the journey of an object. The time taken from the start of the journey is represented on the horizontal axis. Right, time is normally on the horizontal axis. And the velocity of the object is represented on the vertical axis. So this is velocity. This object travels at a constant velocity of 8 kilometers per hour for 4 hours. So it's a constant velocity. And the velocity is not changing because that's measured on the vertical axis. For four hours, and that's four hours. One, two, three, four. And then it travels a further two hours with a steadily decreasing velocity until it reaches zero kilometers per hour. So two more hours until it gets to zero. What distance did this object travel during the entire journey? The graph is a piecewise linear function. Now piecewise means it has a different equation to describe that line than it does to describe that line. To answer the question, each part will be considered separately. Okay, that's the question. What distance did this object travel during the entire journey? The first four hours. So we're gonna look at the first four hours. That's that part there, because it says four hours. The velocity is eight kilometers an hour. Well, the velocity for that four hours was a constant eight kilometers per hour. So in one hour, if it travels eight kilometers, in four hours, it travels 32 kilometers. What is the relationship between 32 and the area under the graph in the first part? So what's the relationship between 32 kilometers and, we, and this colored part here? Well, have a look, that's four and that's eight. So if you just multiply that, you find the area of that rectangle, four times eight, you'll get 32. So the relationship between 32 and the area on the graph is that they are the same. So the area under that line under that function between that line and the x-axis is the distance. The green square shown in the graph above, right, that's the one on the left here, represents one kilometre. Why? Well, because that area, that green square, if you look at that distance there, that's kilom one kilometre per hour. And if you just think in units, that's kilometres divided by hour. And this is one hour. So you multiply, to find that area, it's you multiply that distance by that distance, so if that's one kilometer divided by one hour and then you multiply by one hour, the hours cancel and you're left with one kilometer. Now let's look at the last two hours. That's this colored part here, the last two hours, right? From four hours to six. How many green squares will fit under the second part of the piecewise function? We know that one square, that was a green square, right? One square is one kilometer. So we could just add all those up. That's one kilometer, two kilometers, three kilometers. We're getting in a little trouble in here because we've got all these little ones in here. It'd be hard to judge how much of a kilometer each part of the boxes are. Find the area under the graph. The shape is triangular. Applying the formula for the area of a triangle could work. So rather than just count how many boxes we've got, that is a triangle, and we know how to find the area of a triangle. It's half the base times the height. So it's half times the base, which is two, times the height, which is eight. Okay, they've got the height times the base divided by two. Same thing, and it's eight. Okay, so it's half the base, so it's a half times two times eight, and the answer there is eight. The total distance traveled is 32, right? That was this big box, this big rectangle, plus eight, so the whole distance is 40 kilometers. Reflect, how does the area under a velocity time graph relate to the distance traveled? Well, the area is the distance traveled. Now, if the velocity time graph were curved, how would you calculate the area? It'd be a bit more difficult, wouldn't it, if it was a curved graph? In this chapter, you will study different methods to find or approximate areas between the graph of a function and the x-axis. Example one, for this velocity time graph, find the distance traveled. In the previous example, they actually showed us what that length was, and they showed us what that height was. But we've got something we didn't have before, which is the equation of the line. This is of the form mx plus b. It's a negative slope, so we've got minus 5 for m. And b is 10. Therefore, that point must be 10. 10 metres per second. Because when t is 0, the velocity is 10. So we know that point is actually 0, 10. That's the coordinates of that point. Now, what's this point? Well, this is where the velocity is 0. And we've got that up here. So we equate the equation to zero because we're saying zero equals minus 5t plus 10. And we have to solve for t. And we find out that t equals 2. So we know this point is actually 2, zero. 
So we know that point, that distance is 2. We know this height here is 10, and that's a triangle, so we can find the area. It's, it's a half times 2 times 10, and so the answer is 10. The area is a half 10 times 2, or 2 times 10 equals 10. The distance travelled is 10, and they go through it here as well. The distance travelled is equal to the area under the velocity time graph. To calculate the width of the triangle, find the point where the graph cuts the t-axis. We want to find the width. To calculate the height, find the point where the graph cuts the v-axis, that point there, and that point is where t equals zero, and then you put them into the area formula, which is half the base times the height using two and 10. Example two, find the area under the graph. So it's y and x, we have an equation for that line, we have the equation for that line. They don't tell us that point, it's just x equals a, but they tell us that this is x equals five. Okay, so the first step, find the value of A where the two lines intersect. So if we want to find that point, we just, if that equals Y and this equals Y, then at that point they have the same Y value and they have the same X value. So we have to solve for X. So we can equate 3 to 1.5X. Okay, and they've already called it A. So either 1.5X equals 3 or 1.5A equals 3. Therefore, A equals 2. So we know that is 2. Okay, so we have enough information already to start adding things up. The triangle, the area of the triangle, well, we know that's 2, and the height is 3. So that's 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. So the area of the triangle is 3. The area of the rectangle, well, we know A is 2, so 5 minus 2 is 3. That distance is 3. The height is 3. doesn't look like a, a, a square, but it's okay. 3 threes are 9, and so that's 9. And then we add them together to find that. So we add that triangle, area of that triangle to the area of this rectangle or, or square, and we get 3 plus 9 equals 12. Exercise 13a1. The graph below shows how the velocity of a car changes during the first 60 seconds of a journey. So this is velocity, meters per second, and this is time. Find the distance traveled during the 60 seconds. So when it says the distance traveled, when you've got a velocity versus time, I don't know why they've got an S there. That should be velocity, right? That's V. So when you've got uh, velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, the area under the curve, or the function, is going to be the distance. And it says find the distance traveled during the 60 seconds to here. So it's a good idea just to create a triangle here, and there's another triangle over here. So that's how you should start that one up. You're going to have three, you're going to find three different areas, and then you're going to add them together. So the first triangle, is going to be 20 times 50 divided by 2. The rectangle here is going to be 30 times 50. And this triangle on the end here is going to be 10 times 50 divided by 2. And you add those three up and you get the distance. Question 2. For each velocity time graph, find the distance traveled. So we confirm again velocity and time. So again, you need to break this up into two triangles. So we could do that triangle there, and also you could do this rectangle here. Let's do the triangle first. Well, that's going to be 3 across here, and that's 6 because it's 11 minus 5. So that's 18 divided by 2. So that's 9 for the triangle. And this is 3 here, and that's 5. So that's 15 plus 9. That's 24. A B, this is like the example. We know that's 4. We need to find that point. We can do that by using the equation of this line. At that point, the velocity is 0. So 0 equals t minus 1. That point must be 1, 0, the coordinate point of that. So that's 1. So it's 4 minus 1 is 3. We've got to find this point here as well. This point is at t equals 4. The velocity equals 4 minus 1, which is 3. So that's 3. So that's going to be 3 times 3 is 9 divided by 2. This one's very much like the example. Uh, we've got uh, the velocity here. We've got minutes here. We don't have the points yet, but we've got the equation. So just have a look back at the example, and you should be able to get that. You need to know that point and that point, so we know that dimension and that dimension. Question 3. For each graph, find the shaded area. So I think we can do that now. We've got this line here. We know these points so what we need to be able to do this to find that shaded area, we need to break that up again into a triangle and a rectangle. 
We need to find that point there, which we can find because we just substitute x of 3.5 into here, and we can find the equivalent point there, so we'll know the height. This height here we can find by just putting 0.5 into here, and that'll give us that point, or at least the height. And we know the distance between these two is 3, so that's the same distance as that, so you should be able to do that one. B. Okay, so this one here, we need to know that point. And to find that point, we need to know the equation of the line. The equation of the line we can find because we've got two points. Okay, so we know that it's going to cross here. So we know that it's if it's y equals mx plus b, we know that b equals 2. We can also just use the slope. We know m is the rise over run. Well, in here it's a negative slope, so it's a drop of 2. So it's minus 2 divided by 1. So the equation of that line is going to be y equals minus 2x plus 2. Knowing that, we can just substitute minus 2 in there and find out what that point is, what the y value or the function value is for that point. And then we have enough information and dimensions to find the area of that triangle. Another way we could have found that point there was, uh, it's actually 6, is because this triangle, this small one, and the larger triangle are similar. So if this is 1, and now it's 3, right? We've increased it, that's 1, there's another one, there's another one. If that length is being tripled, well, we can just triple this length. So if we multiplied 3 by 1 to get the 3 along here, and we've got 2, 3 by 2 is 6, so we know that point is at 6, the coordinate point of minus 2 and 6. And C, so we've got this function here. This is another piecewise function. That is the equation of that line. This is the equation of this line. So it's got a negative slope, positive slope. Now, if we have to find this green shaded area here, or this area, we would need to find that point, that point, and that point, we know that point, the x value at least, is 8. So once we find the height here, now how would we find that? Well, the first thing is these two are intersecting. This line and that line are intersecting there. So as we saw in the example, we would equate that to that. Solve for x. That'll give us the x value. Okay, so you've got the x value. And once you find the x value of that one there, you can also substitute x equals 0 to find that point there, which looks like it's going to be 3. So if you know that point is 3... We know what that is. You can Once you find the x value, you can put it back into either one and find the y value. And then you could use that top triangle there. It's just the base, half the base times the height. And then this is the rectangle part. You could work on that as well. There's one thing we need to confirm. Is, is this actually on the same line? Is that a horizontal line? Okay, how do we check that? Well, we know that that point is 0, 3, because when you put 0 in here, the function value is 3. So we need to check that that is also on y equals 3, the line y equals 3. So let's put 8 back into here. We get minus 0 0.5 times 8, that's minus 4, plus 7 is 3. So we can confidently go ahead and just find the area of that triangle by half the base times the height, and then we add it to the area of that rectangle.